your brain, you're in the nerd's domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Nerds Domain uh, Podcast. I'm here today with Lisa Glover to talk about her Kickstarter, the Kit Rex 3D Paper Velociraptor, and uh, we're going to talk all about how amazing this is. So, uh, Lisa, say hi. Hi, everyone. And how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I mean, we just reached uh, 10 times our goal last night, so things are really awesome over here. Excellent. So uh, before we get into your project, we're going to do a couple of really important questions that that um, help establish who you are. So in the impending zombie apocalypse, <laughs> mm-hmm. what is what is your weapon of choice? Gosh, um, I'd have to say it's my it's my sneakers, just because I'm I'm a very fast runner, so I'd be I'd be running away from it all. That sounds like a good plan. Um, okay, so given all of the sci-fi that you know. What planet would you like to visit most? Gosh, I'm, hmm, that is a good question. I don't know, I've watched so many Doctor Who episodes, but I can't remember specific planet names. Um, Mm -hmm. Possibly the one with the the cat creatures. Um, Can't remember the name of that one, but. Yeah, okay. (laughs) That sounds good. Um, So let's get into your project. Tell us a little bit about what Kit, Kit Rex is and what gave you such a passion for this project? Okay, well, Kit Rex, um, it's these, it is these uh, three-foot-long velociraptors that are made out of Bristol board, which you get to put together yourself. And so it's great for kids as a learning tool to help with uh, spatial skills. And it's, it's a puzzle, really, to some degree. And kids find it very challenging and fun to put together and then to play with after they're done. And the, how it started actually is is pretty cool because I it wasn't even something that I was trying to commercialize. It was just something I was purely doing for fun. I it had started out as a homework assignment slash Halloween costume this past October, and we had to explore a manufacturing process for this homework assignment, and we had to demonstrate that process in an interesting way. So I thought, well, let me kill two birds with one stone here, and and make a Halloween costume out of this assignment. And I found a manufacturing process called industrial origami. And I decided to see, I, I applied that to um, chipboard. I, I had, I had chipboard cut on a laser cutter in the patterns that I had designed in some computer programs uh, to make this giant dinosaur costume. And people went wild for it, this 15 foot long dinosaur. To the point where everyone was encouraging me, you know, Lisa, you need to do something with this. You, you, everyone loves this. And I, I thought, well, this is so impractical, though, especially something this big. I mean, no one has room for this. Most people I know I don't have room for a 15 foot long dinosaur in my living room. So, yeah, I just I decided to scale it down and just see where it went, see if people actually wanted it. Okay. And so you came up with what the three foot long, is that right? Right. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they're much smaller kits. Um, what kind of, that looks like they come in all kinds of different colors. What kind of colors are we looking at? Um, the whole, whole rainbow spectrum, including also black, white, metallic, and gold. Uh, so I think it's about 14 colors in all. Okay. And so you, you did this originally on a, on a, what you said, a laser cutter, right? Right. And the point, uh, part of the point of the Kickstarter is to upgrade that and do more of a uh, a high high quality but high vol- uh, volume run as well, right? Right, right. So I, I was originally raising the the first eight thousand to be able to purchase a custom made steel die to be able to produce these in in mass quantities because the laser cutter. I mean, it takes about twenty minutes for a dinosaur kit to be cut out on that, and that's just that's impractical for trying to mass produce it. it Okay, and so you're you're you have way over that. What are the plans now? Uh, you, you said ten times your eight thousand dollar goal. So what are your plans now? Do you just do you plan to make more? Do you man? I, I know that there was mention of a whole Jurassic Park. Is that the next step? 
that that is the next step after my Kickstarter. So I won't be having any more dinosaur designs for this Kickstarter campaign. Instead, all those extra funds are going directly into the creation of my business. Um, so I'm in a technical I'm in a technical entrepreneurship master's program here at Lehigh University, and the whole point of the program is that we we can go from not ha- knowing at all how to run a business, how to start a business, to being able to do just that, launch our business by the spring semester we started uh, this past this past summer. And so with these funds, I'm actually going to be able to launch that business. And one of the big things that I'm going to be using the extra Kickstarter funds for is to purchase my own laser cutter because I've been using my schools to do all the prototyping but, you know, I can't use it for manufacturing, and I really need it if I'm going to be, you know, making more dinosaurs and, and testing them continually. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this actually works really well with your school, too. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks like you have several different lever- levels uh, on your Kickstarter. Um, a lot of them get you a dinosaur or two or three or ten. Um it looks like you're focused really on the dinosaurs. It, what what other dinosaurs are we going to see in the future? And are you going to do another Kickstarter for those, or are you just going to sell them through your website? Well, in the future, I'm planning on definitely having a pterodactyl as the, the first next dino. I'm also looking at the T-Rex, Triceratops, Brachiosaurus, um, a few, mostly the, the popular ones, just because those are the ones that people uh, that I've received the most interest in so far. And, um, sorry, what was your other question? Um, where will you be selling those? Will, will it be another Kickstarter or will it be through your website? Uh, that I'm actually not sure of yet. I, I've been weighing both options, but I think it's too early to tell yet, uh, which, which I'll do. I might do another Kickstarter though, because just, just because the Kickstarter campaign is so fantastic and I'd love mm-hmm. to be able to offer them the, the initial models at a lower price than they would retail at. And it looks like you have like, thousands of uh, raptors that you're going to have to make Mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So you've been really successful with this. Um, You said your, your, the name of your company is Architrep. Yeah. What, what, what besides dinosaurs, is that your main focus right now? Or are we going to see something else from you? Uh, You're definitely going to see other, other creatures from me in in the future. As long as the dinosaurs go well, I've, I've been thinking about, um, about mythical creatures, you know, um, um, sorry, what were they called? Dragons, um, maybe centaurs. Someone suggested centaurs, but also probably animals like tigers and rhinoceroses. And actually, I so part of my business is you know creating these things that I'm selling, but I also do work for other people. I do consulting work, so I just finished making rhinoceros masks for someone for a play that's happening in Philadelphia this coming fall. So I, awesome. I do a variety of of work in this in this sphere. Okay, so it looks like you have uh, three weeks left, give or take, mm-hmm. and you're way way over your goal already. Uh, does that does that increase the stress being that far beyond where you originally planned, or what do you think? You have three weeks to go. What happens if you get three times more money? <laughs> well, um, I I don't think it increases the stress too much for me. From for me, this is all just exciting because I never expected it. And I know I have a fantastic uh, group of advisors and supporters who are who are there for me to help me make sure I, I that this happens and that I deliver all these orders on time. And so I'm really if I get three times the amount that I have now, um, that just means I'll be able to crank out the next version of dinosaurs sooner and because um, just, you know, all the problems that I could have right now, as, as one of my advisors was telling me yesterday, can be solved with money. So any <laughs> any manufacturing yeah. issues that I'm having there, especially, well, they're all in the U.S., fortunately. I don't have to worry about any overseas issues, but all, all these problems can be solved with money. And fortunately, that's what I have now, which is a very odd thing to me still. <laughs> Excellent. 
So um, you made this giant Velociraptor for you. Mm-hmm. Where where are we going to be able to see that in the next year? Do you main, plan on making um, any appearances anywhere publicly, or is this just kind of for you to, to play with when you have the chance? So the, I, I do plan on making some public appearances. For example, I was, I was just at um, the Banana Factory in, in South Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, two days ago, and on April 26th, I'm going to be at the Lehigh Valley Mini Maker Fair, also in Bethlehem. Um, there's a toy company that's opening up in Kansas City sometime in May, and I'm planning on being there, too. And uh, I'll, anywhere else where I'm invited, really, I'd love to attend other maker fairs dressed as a giant dinosaur. And there are some people who, through the Kickstarter, you know, one of the one of the backer rewards is a custom-made giant dinosaur. So three people have already chosen that option. So I'm sure that in in cities across the U.S., you might be seeing some giant dinosaurs wandering around uh, come August. I'm also planning on making the giant dinosaurs available, hopefully for sale at a much lower price point sometime uh, about a year from now. It, that would be my goal. So that way everyone can afford to be able to make a, themselves into a giant dinosaur. Okay. So – when when you when you decided to do this because this started out as a as a fun um, costume last year for for Halloween right mm-hmm. when you decided to do this did you ever expect that you would be asked to make personal appearances in places as far as away as Kansas City no never expected it I as you said I just I did this for fun and I did not expect other people to love it so much so this is all just just it makes me just say wow excellent. All right. Well, um, anything else that we've missed? Anything else we should touch on about the project? Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty well. Excellent. So you guys should head over to Kickstarter and check out the project. There's a lot of good backer kit levels or backer levels. Um, I hit the twenty dollar level because I'm already a backer, uh, or I'm just going to get a, a kit rex of my own to put together with my son, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, I suggest you guys check that out. They start it. Uh, they started at 15, but they were only 50 of those. Those were all early backers. But 20 bucks for a kit, and then you can get a whole herd of kits. And like Lisa said, there's even the option to have her make you a custom giant kit, uh, kit Rex. Um, so head over to the website, or I'm sorry, head over to the Kickstarter and check that out. You can head over to our website and kind of watch what's going on there. I'm sure that as this develops and as she gets more information, um, she'll have more more there on the website. Uh, it's at kit-rex.com, um, and you can find her on facebook.com slash kitrex, and you can go to tinyurl.com slash rexkick, and that will take you right to her Kickstarter. Um, and I think that will do us today. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter, like always, and you can head over to the website and check out our reviews, and we will talk to you guys real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network, the network where it's on.